Okay, so today we're going to discuss something uh, we all don't like, and that's uh, being stuck in traffic. And uh, in particular, we're going to look at how we can model traffic using game theory. It says uh, network traffic, but we're going to apply it to uh, the type of traffic that we're used to uh, dealing with uh, when we commute to and from work or uh, travel to various places. Um, Fortunately, in Hilo, the uh, traffic's not too bad, but there are definitely other parts of the world where it is really bad. So uh, let's take a look at this uh, modeling of traffic using game theory. And at the uh, beginning of the course, we mentioned using network theory to model a transportation network, but we really didn't elaborate much, elaborate much on that point. Um, we also mentioned uh, braces paradox, which is adding capacity can sometimes actually slow down traffic. So, you know, building more roads or building more routes can sometimes slow down traffic. And we'll, we'll see why that works out uh, in this uh, talk today. And when we model transportation networks, we need to evaluate the routes and network in terms of congestion. So here's our network. The edges are the roads are the highways in that traffic network. And the uh, nodes are exits or destinations. Uh, we can start by making a model and assuming that everybody wants to drive from node A to node B. Uh, we could assume that uh, A is a uh, suburb, maybe Hawaiian Paradise Park, and B is uh, Hilo Town. So uh, maybe that's where people want to go. Now, in the simplified example, the A and D and the B and C edges are actually insensitive to the congestion. It's going to take 45 minutes regardless of how many cars are on. So kind of a nice feature, but it's always going to take 45 minutes. Uh, on the other hand, A and C and D to B are sensitive to the number of vehicles that are on the road. So uh, for each one that takes uh, you know, uh, X divided by 100 uh, for the, no, where X is the uh, number of cars on the road. So, you know, say there were a thousand cars on the road, it would take 10 minutes to get from A to C and 10 minutes to get from D to B. So what happens uh, with this uh, particular network? Uh, suppose that we have 4,000 cars and they want to get from A, that starting point we mentioned, maybe that's uh, Hawaiian Paradise Park, to B, which is Hilo Town, as part of the morning commute. Uh, there are two possible routes each car can choose. They can go that upper route uh, through C, or they can go the lower route through D. Uh, for example, if each car takes the upper route, then the uh, total amount of time will be uh, 4,000 divided by 100 is 40 minutes plus the 45 minutes from C to B, that's 85 minutes. Uh, same if they choose the uh, lower route, it'll be 85 minutes. Uh, so, but if we divide them up evenly, say we put 2,000 cars on the upper route, so that would be 20 plus 45, that'd be 65, and 2,000 cars on the lower route, it'd be 20 plus 45, would be 65. So when we're looking at this, uh, it's actually a game that, the, that we can play using game theory. Uh, the drivers are the players, and the routes are the choices that they're making. Uh, the payoff is the negative of the total travel time because uh, nobody really wants to be uh, stuck in traffic. Uh, the critical difference here between this and what we looked at a couple uh, lectures ago was that uh, we have a larger number of players involved in this. Uh, we also saw the Nash equilibrium, uh, where it's a list of strategies, one for each player, so that each player's strategy is the best response to all the others. There's no dominant strategy here. There's no uh, best strategy that's better than the other in this particular uh, network. Uh, the Nash equilibrium, like we discussed, ends up being the balance of sending 2,000 cars uh, through the upper route and 2,000 cars through the uh, lower route. So balancing out that traffic, and that gives you the uh, Nash equilibrium. So uh, braces paradox, uh, which we uh, discussed a little bit in uh, chapter one, uh, the first uh, lecture on the uh, material in the uh, text. Um, is basically sometimes when we add uh, capacity to roads or roadways, uh, we end up uh, with uh, more congestion as a result. So imagine we have our original design and we have a new low cost route from C to D. In fact, it's zero. That's some major engineering improvement right there. Uh, at equilibrium, uh, every driver uses the route through both C and D. And as a result, the travel time for every driver is eight, since it's 4,000 on the 
uh, A to C, they take that shortcut that's uh, zero time to get down to D. And then they take uh, another 40 minutes to get from D to B. It ends up making things worse for everybody. We said the social optimum was about 65 minutes. Uh, we're now up to 80 minutes with adding in this uh, shortcut. So uh, that's an example where it makes uh, things worse. Uh, there's no way given individually self-interested behavior by the drivers to get back to that even balanced solution that was better for everyone. Um, you know, and this uh, phenomenon of uh, adding resources to tra uh, transportation network, uh, hurting performance uh, at equilibrium was first articulated by uh, Dietrich Brace in 1968, and it became known as Brace's paradox. Uh, there's a lot of other settings where this uh, happens. Uh, where if you add a new strategy to a game, it makes things worse. So imagine the prisoner's dilemma where confess is not an option. You know, what happens to the two prisoners? Well, they were uh, captured and um, they, you know, had some minor charge that they could be convicted of and spend one year in prison. But when we add in confess, they both end up spending four years in prison. Uh, it makes things worse for uh, both uh, prisoners. So how bad can Brace's paradox be? Uh, how much larger can the equilibrium travel time be after the addition of an edge uh, relative to what it was before? Well, uh, Rough Garden and Tardos showed that if we added edges to a network with the equilibrium pattern of traffic, there is always an equilibrium in the new network whose travel time is no more than uh, four thirds times as large. Uh, it's not as depressing as it could be, but still a 33% uh, increase in commute time uh, certainly sucks. So, you know, what are the uh, social costs? And I'll, you know, go off on a little bit of rant here uh, because it's a real shame uh, at the uh, start of the pandemic, we had a actual legitimate chance to minimize the amount of uh, traffic that we have um, and uh, the amount of uh, resources that we're consuming, but uh, we definitely blew that. Um, so, you know, network traffic at equilibrium is generally not socially optimal, but how far away is it from it? Uh, let's extend our idea of a traffic network. It can be now any graph and drivers can have different starting points and destinations. You know, some people in, uh, on the Big Island will start in uh, Paradise Park. Uh, some people will start in uh, Mountain View. Uh, other people may uh, start all the way up in Honoka. Uh, but each edge will have a travel time function based on X drivers with that function being linear. So it'll be A times X plus B uh, for A and B uh, greater than zero. Traffic pattern is simply a choice of a path by each driver. And the social cost of a traffic pattern is the sum of all the travel times incurred by all the drivers when they use this uh, set of traffic patterns. So here's the traffic grid that achieves the minimal possible social cost. Uh, you know, we divide it up between the a and C and the uh, A to C and the A to D uh, route. It's not perfect for uh, you know the drivers, but it uh, minimizes the uh, possible uh, social costs. So four drivers start node A and they're going to node B. Uh, each driver requires seven units of time to get to their destination. So uh, going from A to C would require two units of time because it's equal to X plus five to go from C to B. Uh, likewise, five to go from A to D plus two to go from D to B. So seven units of time per driver, you have a total social cost of 28. Well, what happens? Uh, everybody takes that uh, shortcut from uh, C to D. And that's what the Nash equilibrium is, is when the drivers act in their self-interest. So we have four drivers who start at node A and go to node B. That's a cost uh, going from A to C is a cost of four plus zero, plus four, it ends up being eight. And eight times four is 32. So it went from 28 to 32. So, you know, it was a uh, greater social cost. So it's worth asking, uh, you know, is there always an equilibrium traffic pattern? And uh, whether there always exists an equilibrium traffic pattern whose social cost is not too much more than the social optimum. You know, can we have, uh, and we're going to have traffic, can we get it to be close to the uh, social optimum for everybody? Um, 
and the spoiler for that second question, we'll find there's always an equilibrium whose social cost is at most twice uh, that of the optimum. It's actually four thirds uh, that we talked about earlier, but that's a little bit harder to prove. And so the book uh, does it with a bound of two. Uh, the best response dynamics is a way of going about and finding that equilibrium. So the procedure starts from any traffic pattern. If it's an equilibrium, hey, we're done. Otherwise, there's at least one driver whose best response, uh, given what everyone else is doing, is uh, some alternative path providing a lower travel time. So, you know, I'm, hey, I'm not going to send this traffic. I'm going to take this uh, other route. Uh, we pick one such driver and have them switch to this alternate path. We now have a new traffic pattern, and we again check whether it's an equilibrium. Uh, if it isn't, then we have some drivers switch to the best response and continue in this fashion. So they get off and take a side street or uh, take a different route to work. And they continue that until it's no longer possible to do that. Uh, for games without an equilibrium, though, uh, the problem is, is it doesn't terminate. It just goes uh, back and forth. But if there is an equilibrium, it will terminate at that equilibrium. So how to show that it terminates? Uh, we need to introduce a progress measure that somehow corresponds to social cost. Uh, as best response runs, uh, however, social costs can go up and down. Uh, but what we can use instead is a measure called potential energy, where uh, the potential energy is the sum of the total energy on each one of the uh, routes. If an edge has no drivers on it, uh, then the potential energy is defined to be zero. The potential energy of a traffic pattern is then simply the sum of the potential energies of all the edges with their current number of drivers in this traffic pattern. And the uh, potential energy of an edge E with X drivers is not the total travel time experienced by those drivers across, across it. Uh, since they're X drivers, uh, they're each experiencing a travel time of T sub B of X, their total travel time is uh, x times t sub e of x, which is a different number. The potential energy instead is a sort of cumulative quality in which we imagine drivers crossing the edge one by one, and each driver only feels the delay caused by himself and the drivers crossing the edge in front of him. So let's take a look at how this works. Each step um, causes this potential energy to decrease. And once we reach a minimum energy, the algorithm terminates. So Let's start here. We have two going the upper route and two going the lower route. The energy uh, consumed uh, from A to C is uh, one plus two. Uh, and the energy going from C to B is the two um, five. So that's uh, 10, 13. Uh, going from A to D is 10. And the energy going from D to B is one plus two, because we feel the energy of the person in front of us. So the potential energy here is 26. Uh, so what ends up happening is one of the uh, drivers is going to, going from the A to C, the upper route, is going to take that uh, shortcut because that's uh, zero. And so the uh, energy is going to go down. You saw the one plus two, but going from C to B, the energy, uh, now we take five out of that system and it goes down to five. We add in three for the uh, energy going from D to B. So after that step, the potential energy is 24. Now, the second top driver also takes that C to D. So we solve the one plus two, and then nothing on this route from C to B. There's no potential energy there. Instead, we get one plus two plus three plus four going from D to B. And after that step, the potential energy is uh, 23. Now, uh, the bottom driver looks at this and says, hey, you know, I can actually reduce the uh, potential energy as well. I'll go the top route, uh, one plus two plus three, and then the energy at the uh, bottom is one plus two plus three plus four. And then finally, our last holdout uh, down there at the bottom is going to give up and join the others. And after that step, the potential energy is 20. So when a driver leaves, we release energy from the system and add it back in on the new route. The potential energy release when a driver abandons its current path is exactly equal to the travel time they were experiencing. Drivers will only change the path if it causes travel time to decrease. So the equilibrium exists, but how does it compare with the social optimum? The equilibrium we reach is at most twice the cost of the social optimum that we started with. And in fact, you know, it's uh, four thirds.
Uh, so there is an equilibrium with at most twice the social optimal cost. And that's it. <laughs>